Hi, thanks for joining. I'm your host, Chris Gennaro. My co-host is Eric Risk, and today we have innumerable forms. How you doing, guys? Good. All right. What's going on? So uh, I guess just tell your names and what you do in the band. Okay. Uh, I'm Justin. I'm the singer. And I'm Connor. I play drums. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll just jump right into it. You guys released a two-song uh, cassette recently, the uh, Despotic Rule. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. It's on Iron Lung Records. You guys seem to like doing cassettes. I think a bunch of your stuff is on cassettes. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, like w when we started, it was just going to be like a, a kind of tape thing, seven inch. Um, but then, you know, we, we got some offers to, to, do, to do records, to do the 12 inch and then do the LP. But yeah, I mean, you know, I feel like with the style, it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's kind of catered towards the tape format you know yeah yeah sounds, first... sounds good on tape too grimy and nasty you know what i mean it's, it's yeah. definitely lends itself to that format so cool and let's let's i guess talk about the origins of the band because i think it started out as a uh like a one piece pro uh, one piece i don't know if that's a but a one-man band <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you will uh, and then after the first, uh, cause I think you have a bunch of demos that actually aren't available anymore, uh, around, at least I was looking for, I think what was the first one. Right. Well, the, 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 you're right. It did start as, as a, um, as like a one man project in, in 2007, I, I recorded a, a demo. Um, but you know, I, I, I didn't release it publicly. I just kind of. I, I passed it out to some friends. Um, I posted it on on a message board at the time, um, but it didn't have like didn't have like a hard copy like physical release, you know. And then um, and then a year after that, um, I recorded um, an EP called Dark Worship, and uh, that that's that w that was put up by by Hell Masker. It had it had two pressings, but it's not available anymore. Okay, and then it sounds like because I when I was talking to you, you were like, yeah, the members are from all over different states, and right, you know, it, it's kind of funny because I I hear stories about hey, you know, so and so left the band because they moved, you know, twenty right. minutes away or something like that. So to have different yeah, yeah, guys yeah. from different states sometimes is a little unusual. Oh, uh, there's a you have to live a minimum distance from Justin to be in the band, you know. <laughs> yeah, you got to be. <laughs> it's a reverse like a requirement. Guy, at least two yeah, yeah, states. At least. Exact, exactly. <laughs> Well, exactly. Well, <laughs> well, like I was saying, you know, th this this never had any intention of of being like a live band or a band that that would play shows and stuff like that. But um, but after we put out the um, the the seven inch, we we got some offers to play, and so I kind of recruited um some guys, um, recruited the the guys from that band Mammoth Grinder and uh, and Hatred Surge at the time. So those were like that, like the the original like like backing band, if you will, were, were, were consisted of those, of those two bands. But then uh, after that, some guys left and then we kind of hammered down what was to be like the, the actual, you know, concrete lineup of innumerable forms that we have now. That's cool. So it almost became like, like a, like a seven samurai situation where you just went out there and just recruited. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, what else was I going to talk about? Uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. I, I keep wanting to get into this story I read about somebody like puking all over the place before a show. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell you whatever you need to know. Yeah, well, and, yeah, I mean, I, you know, any, any good stories that you know, I mean, definitely, uh, definitely come out with them, you know? We'll, we'll listen to all that stuff. That one, I mean, that one was like, we were playing in uh, Portland, Oregon, and uh, I, I think I just didn't drink enough water that day mm. or something, one of those, where you just yeah. don't take care of yourself. And we were in the car all day. I remember we were, like, driving there from Seattle, but we got stuck in traffic, so we were in traffic for, like, fucking 10 hours or something. And I just remember getting to the show and being, like, feeling totally wrecked. Mm. and um like i kind of just like slept in the van for like while the other bands played 
And then when it was our turn to play, I was like, Justin, you need to go set up my drums because I can't do it. And then I just, like, was fucking vomiting in the alley by the venue, just, like, puking my fucking brains out. And then walked inside and was like, okay, time to play. Like, but you, we were you playing. played fine. I, you, didn't, you didn't mess up once. You know what I mean? That's, like, that's you were probably the, the tightest one out of all of us. <laughs> but I think – for a split second, I confirmed fell asleep when I was playing. Like we were playing. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm not. I'm, sure I'm not even the kidding. Was, was probably asleep anyway. So who gives a shit? <laughs> but we have a lot of really, you know, really slow, hateful songs, and I just like hit a crash symbol, and I just remember like dozing off, legitimately dozing off, and then being like, "Fuck, okay, I gotta." You know, like, <laughs> that's like yeah, hand like, like, That's dream a dream for a second. It probably didn't even matter. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was probably even better because it sounded more like winter, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's like, that's the puking story, the infamous puking story. Yeah, I probably have to give credit. I think I read that on, I want to say, Revolver magazine or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I was checking that out. Um, and, uh, yeah, so you guys move pretty flawlessly between, like, the fast stuff and the slow stuff. Um, I had it written down here. You had a kind of an interesting quote in that same uh, article about how the fast songs were, were mostly about anxiety, but the slower stuff was about depression. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, guess, I guess that would make sense because, you know, when I feel like when, when you have anxiety, it's very, it's very frantic and very, um, you know, like, uh, like jumpy and whatnot. You know what I mean? I feel like that our parts kind of sound like that and the slow and the, the slow parts. Yeah. I mean, like depression makes sense. Like it's, 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 it, it can feel like it's never ending. Um, you know, it can be, uh, it can wear on you and stuff like that. And I kind of feel like our, our, I think our songs in general wear on people, but definitely the, the slow parts do, you know? And then maybe we love, talk, uh, keep going. I was just saying we love the slow parts. They don't wear on us. We love them. Yeah, cool, to, to, yeah, to me, like to me, the fast part is just like a means to getting to the slow part. You know what I mean? So why don't you talk about your influences a little bit? Uh, you know, definitely, probably more with the slow stuff. Uh, I do hear a little bit of that Peaceville uh, influence that I, I think you've talked about before. Like, there's definitely, like, I definitely hear a little bit of Paradise Lost in there and some other stuff and and. Uh, you know, it's funny when you hear bands' influences and you're like, yeah, I like this. And then you hear the band's influence and then you're like, oh, yeah, that, well, that now it makes sense. Because right. I was definitely like way into that stuff uh, in the 90s. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well, just just real quick, you know, when 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 it first when when I first started the band, it was probably more influenced by like, uh, yeah, I don't know, like like the Finnish stuff, you know, uh, Abhorrence, Demigod disgrace and then and then i started adding more even then i still had a little bit of like the paradise lost type of thing but 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 as it went on we started adding more like uh winter like i said paradise lost anathema um uh autopsy um you know like slow uk american do trouble you know what i mean like yeah. like that you know especially the the stuff that, that we're doing now i feel like sounds more like anathema and trouble candle mass just more like single note kind of kind of more traditional I mean, even black sabbath too black sabbath yeah yeah, yeah right yeah. of course so like that's that's my favorite stuff that's the stuff that that i'm into and and i'm glad that we can like we, we still you know it i think our stuff is still ugly you know it so so it's some of some of that stuff is is a little more clean like like not as as ignorant as 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 our stuff but i feel like you can still add elements of that and make it and make it ugly too you know yeah i thought one of the interesting things too is when i was looking uh you know we were talking about how you you took you got formed the band by all these different bands and then when i really looked at what other bands you guys were in it was like a list like a mile long yeah <laughs> we we've all been we've all been doing music for years you know what i mean like i mean i've been playing i've been playing in, in bands for like 25 years connor's been alive for like 25 years but you've, yeah. but you've probably been playing you're probably doing what at least i don't know 
10 plus for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm in the 10 plus club at this point. Right. So yeah. we we had we had already been doing we we've been playing music in in um in punk hardcore metal, uh, uh, you know extreme metal traditional mess. You know, it runs the game. We we've been doing that for for years. You know, I think all, everybody, all, every, every single person in the band, everybody in the band has very like diverse taste in music too. So even the bands that everybody's been in are all different. You know, like every you know it, it's not uncommon for one of us to be in four or five different types of bands you know what i mean yeah i mean obviously like all under the extreme music like you know gambit whether it's punk or hardcore or metal or whatever but it's you know very, a lot of different styles get represented and in, in a way i think innumerable forms is like you know pulling from a lot of stuff that none of us do in any of our other bands like a lot of that peaceful stuff and you know some of the death dooms. I mean, I, at least I, I haven't been in any bands that really pull from that kind of stuff. And I don't think a lot of the other guys have either. Justin has, but uh, that's kind of what makes innumerable forms really uh, unique and, and interesting and fun for me is just other than just playing with the, you know, caliber of musicians that everybody in the band is, which is always a fucking great time. But just the influences that we have are like, just very unique. Like, I think we have a very, like, you know, interesting concoction of, of stuff that we pull from. And uh, I've never been in another band like that. So I like, I, that's what I like about Innumerable Forms. It's one yeah, of the many I mean, There was definitely like. names there, genres that were all over the place. Um, uh, I'm just looking at my, like, I, the, I, the Mind Eraser, I think, is, like, real, was real hardcore, if I remember correctly. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, but like straight up, not like metalcore, but like just straight up. No, like, like, hard, like, like yeah. yeah, hardcore <laughs> punk. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So and you, we, we actually, like, none of us have been in metalcore bands. Like, I can say that's that. True. So, like, that's true. <laughs> that's like the one thing. You, know what you, I mean? you, you skip that. that. Yeah, none of that. <laughs> nope. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So, so wait, Justin, do you, do you still play bass in Magic Circle? Then? Well, Ma Magic Magic Circle actually just broke up. Maybe oh, like, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe like like end of August, early September. Oh, okay. So, Shit. Yeah, I didn't know. Oh, damn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but but yeah, I, I played I played bass in Magic Circle. Okay. So, having done some of the EPs just by yourself, now when you guys go play, you just sing though, right? I just sing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Exactly. So that's and because um, you used to do everything, and now I don't want to say do nothing, but like, <laughs> no, I basically do nothing. <laughs> he does a whole lot of nothing. I love it. Don't, he does a whole lot of nothing. nothing trust yeah. me. <laughs> no, to me, this is this is best case scenario. You know what I mean? Like, like I just sit back while these guys put in the hard work. You know what I mean? So, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so right, okay, so uh, actually. That's not like 100% true because I, I did do the drums, guitars, bass and stuff like that. But uh, this guy, Chris Corey, did the, the lead guitars for the 7-inch um, the, the, the and the split 12-inch uh, we did with, with Blessed Awful. And he did, he did, some, he did some leads for the, uh, the Punishment LP as well. But, but that was the first one where everybody uh, played on stuff, you know? So, so where does everybody live? Like, obviously, you're in Boston. I'm in Boston. Yep. I live in Washington, DC. Oh geez. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then the, the bass player, Doug also lives in Boston and, um, and Chris, the, the, uh, the, the, the guitar player, we have two guitar players. One, um, this guy, Chris, who, who lives in Philadelphia, but he's originally from Texas. He, um, he was living in Austin before. And then Jensen, the other guitar player, uh, lives in Seattle. Okay. Pretty spread out. And, and actually, Chris, yeah, he, he played in so many things, I looked. He was on uh, uh, Mammoth Grinder, Iron yep. Age, Power Trip, like mm -hmm. so yep. many things. Yep. But he plays drums in Power Trip. Plays drums yeah. in Power Trip, right. Yeah, He's a talented guy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> to say the least. He, yeah. he, want, he wanted to be here, but it's, it's – um, his girlfriend was taking him out for his birthday tonight. So, you know. Oh, you know. Have, have, all right. If he watches this, have, happy birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Wishing you a virtual birthday. There we yeah. go. Yeah. But, but uh, Jensen, the, the guitar player, um, he also 
he's in that band Iron Lung, right? And he does Iron Lung records. And he put oh out, yeah, yeah. And he and he and he put out the tape. So. Okay. Yeah, it's funny. I did not make that connection as I was looking through everything that his band name and the label name matched yep. up coincidentally. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So he so he did that. The the as as far as the, the tape goes we weren't sure what we were going to do with it because um at first the plan was to to record the lp last uh march last february last march but obviously like that that couldn't happen because of the the pandemic so what we did was we demoed some new songs and then two of the songs from that session ended up being being the tape yeah so do you guys record remotely or do you get together and record in the studio at the same time well no we get yeah we when we recorded punishment we all went to boston and recorded it up there with our friend ryan and then this time around uh now that chris lives in philly he was like justin said he was in texas before and he moved to philly like what was it two years ago maybe and it's actually been kind of a blessing because justin and i have been able to meet up in philly like it's only a few hours for me it's only a few hours from him rather than all of us going up to Boston. So we tracked in Philly this time with uh, our friend Arthur, and that was like a great experience and easy going. And so, we, yeah, we were all in the same room. But because of the pandemic, um, Jensen and – I think Doug is going to Philly, right, Justin? Doug, Doug is going to Philly, correct. Doug's going to go track base in Philly, but Jensen is going to be tracking remotely in Seattle. Okay. So. It's a little funky this time, but if things were normal, we would have all just, you know, gone to Philly and just done it sure. together there. But, you know, things but, were a little different this time. Yeah. Ha ha having Chris in, in Philadelphia has been, like, a, a huge difference because, yeah, like, having, having like, at least, like, a drummer a and a guitar, like, like, everyone in the same room, like, working together. Like, I'm sorry, it's just, it's just easier to put songs together like that. It's easier yeah. to arrange and all that, and it takes the pressure – off like the individual guys who are writing songs it just it just makes life so much easier i'm so psyched that that we were able to do it that way too it's yeah. also more fun i mean it's like yeah we can all just get together and fucking hang out and watch movies and write music and it's just like you know it's, it's a little less like not that it was bad before i loved doing it before when we would all go to boston but it's it's less like you know you're on a business trip it's more like hey like we're fucking just kicking back and having band practice you know right which is cool when since everybody lives so far away from each other that we can even do that yeah and and you guys said that when you could play live shows sometimes you come together and you literally don't rehearse until like the day of or you know yeah, yeah for sure prior yeah. to, to doing a show yeah. right like yeah, that's kind of that, that that's that's stressful but you know it, there hasn't been any like real disasters like i can't believe that i mean all these guys are good so like you know whatever but like um these new songs we would have to re rehearse like there's no way we could bust that out like in a day like i don't care how you know expert these musicians are like like the songs now are a little more complicated i think you know was that a conscious effort to make them like more intricate or yeah, well, okay. Well, when, actually, when 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 I started this, I wanted to make really, I wanted to take all the bands I really liked, but to simplify them and make them extra stupid and, and ignorant. That's why I, I made sure all the like there was only three or four riffs for a song and stuff like that. But then, yeah, I think it just it just kind of evolved into something like not not technicals because we're not technical at all, but like just something like a a little more involved as far as the arrangements go and stuff like that. But that wasn't like you know, I, I wasn't like, oh, okay, well now, now every song has to have 11 parts. You know what I mean? Like, that's just not like the, the, yeah. the way, the way I thought about it, you know? Sure. sure. A lot of more, uh, like dual guitar stuff this time. Yeah. Cool. I think that's the main, like, it's not technical, like Justin said, but yeah, like that would, that's like the main, like intricacy that sort of we had, we added to this record. I mean, there's always been two guitar stuff but i feel like there's quite a bit of it on this like you know like trouble style or paradise lost style so mm -hmm. yeah cool so what are you guys working on now um i mean i i hate to be like that because your your no, okay. just came out but uh 
Um, no, no, it's 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 cool because we we keep a low profile anyways. Like no one really knows what's what's happening with with the band unless they ask us. So like, um, right right now we um we're in the process of of tracking the uh, the new LP, um, uh, full length, um, for Profound Lore again. Uh, it's gonna be nine songs and two like the two songs from the tape. Um, are going to be are going to be on the were re recorded for for this record, but yeah, so it's it's another full length album. That's that's the plan as far as music goes. And we had a um, we had a, a, a tour um, that was that actually got had gotten postponed, well, it gotten canceled because um, obviously because of, of the pandemic. That was supposed to happen um, last September. It was uh, Kill Town. We were, we were supposed to do it around Kill Town Death Fest, which which we were supposed to be playing. Uh, in Denmark, and then we we're gonna do like a, a week after that. Um, so we're gonna try to do that. I, like we're we're on the fest again this year. If it happens, hopefully it does. And uh, and then we're gonna do a, a tour around that too. Awesome. Hopefully with that. Uh, hopefully with with that band, Faceless Burial from um, from Australia that that we're friends with. So. Oh, very cool. And that would be a European tour, though. That I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, you, right. That that would be a European tour, right? So we don't. Yeah, we, we uh, uh, that's basically what, what we have going on right now. You know what I mean? Like we, uh, I mean, Jensen and Doug still need to record. I'm finishing up my vocals probably th probably this week, maybe into next week, and uh, and and then we'll we'll be after that we'll be done with, with with the record. I don't know when it would come out. We haven't even talked about artwork. We haven't talked about when it would be released or anything like that. But like it, it should be done hopefully by like the the end of the year. You know. Okay, so so early on next year, maybe we're right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Realistically, we'll see, we'll probably summertime, if I had to guess. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, it takes a while to get to get the stuff printed and and all that. Yeah. Totally. Junk. Um, you definitely like black and white artwork. I noticed that on the uh, yeah who doesn't. purpose or. <laughs> yeah, I, like like I said, it, it kind of went with the with the early aesthetic. You know what I mean? Like. I mean, I don't see us having like this like lush like painting, oil paint. Like, I mean, that's cool. I respect it. Like, like it's cool for some bands, but for us, like, I don't think so. Like, like it's not gonna look like a Candlemas record or something like that. You know, like I, I wish I wish it did, but 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 <laughs> like I, I would I would rather it, we we keep it simple, stripped down. I have I haven't even thought about what we're gonna do for the for the next record. I'm not like I'm not like a visual guy. You know what I mean? Like I, I leave that to, to the other guys. Like I, I'm just, I don't know. I don't, I'm my, my brain doesn't think that way, you know? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, okay. So you're definitely going to do it on profound lore, right? Uh, CD and LP and yep. that I assume. Say yep. Cause that, yeah. Right. And then well, you mentioned well, you had a, uh, had a really good, uh, how do you say the guy's name? Br Brun, Bruni? Bruni. Yeah. yeah Bruni. Yeah. Chris mm -hmm. Bruni. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah, I, I think one of the other quotes I saw was that, that uh, he puts up with your bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, he does. I mean, like, I know that I'm a pain in the ass to deal with. Like, I mean, he probably has to deal with even worse people than me. Like, <laughs> so God bless him. But like, yeah, I mean, he, there, there, there was some hiccups as, as far as, as the release for the, the last record went, but I think everything is going to be like smooth sailing this time around. So hopefully like, I'm not as like, like uh you know like high demand as i was last time so but you know what like everyone in that that world has to deal with headaches from all these like crazy people because everyone in everyone in this world is kind of in the in like metal and stuff are like insane anyway insane. so like totally insane yeah, totally crazy <laughs> so like it, it, it's probably not even a big deal there's no way we're unique in that <laughs> regard there's no right. way yeah, yeah. Uh, who else you you mentioned a couple of your friends who else do you like to play with as far as like other bands yeah like like what who are your who are your buddies and okay and um let's see well okay so the um we innumerable forms did a split with that band blessed awful from from poor also from boston They're, they've been a death metal band for a long time they're actually they they i think they started in like 2005 and um so we we've played shows with them, like we did our record release with them, um, and uh, they're also putting they're 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 going to be putting out a new record soon. So check out for that. Um, who else like other bit like uh, more, more tip room. room? I like 
Yeah, from uh, yep. Olympia. Yep, from Olympia. They're uh, awesome. Yep, uh, faceless burial, contaminated from, from Australia, internal rot. Um, who else? Uh, I'm, I'm buds with the, with the guy from Toon Mold. We haven't played with them, though, but yeah. you know, maybe that'll happen one day. Um, who else? Who else, Connor? Well, Connor, to... Connor is in Genocide Pack. We actually have, we haven't played a show with Genocide Pack, have we? No, never. No, we've never played with Genocide Pack. And then yeah. Chris, obviously, you know, was Mammoth Grinder. I don't think is a band anymore, but by default, I mean they were the backing band at one point. So okay, they'd yeah. be a band to shout out for sure. Um, yeah. uh, I think Evo- Evo- Evoking, Evo- 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 yeah, Evo- yeah, Evo- Evo- really good. Yeah, yep, yep. yep. Uh, F- Funabram, we've played with Funabram before. That was cool. cool. Yep. Yeah, I think and there's tons. There's right? tons of bands, you know. Cool. Say it again. I think they're they're from New Jersey. They yeah. are, they are from New Jersey. They're from they're from Clifton, New Jersey, actually. <laughs> so wait, Connor, would you would you do a double duty if Genocide Pack played? Yeah, it? I would love to. I mean, I've I've done double duty many times before. I'm not afraid anymore, right. you know. So. If that was ever a thing, I would be more than happy, you know. Cool. So, yeah. Cool. But playing new reform, that's probably like a break for you, like compared to, to genocide pack, you know what I mean? It's different. I mean, innumerable forms is uh you know, there are those sections with those blast beats for two minutes straight that are Yeah, cool, I guess. But, so. <laughs> and, you know, it's all it's all just different. But yeah, no, I would I would love to and you know, hopefully whenever shows get back we'll be playing as soon as possible i don't know where you guys are based but uh you know hopefully we'll be playing a show near you guys whenever uh, this shit's I'm, all in, over, I'm in new so. york and new york cool. yeah cool what, what part what part of new york uh brooklyn new york okay oh, cool. cool awesome yeah actually i think you know what is interesting i i think i uh missed <clears throat> uh i wanted to see a numeral forms but i was out of town at it, the day you played, it was at I think Union Pool, and I was at yeah, it, that's I was right. Like, that's God right. damn it! I like fucking yep. it. But I heard it was show. a really awesome show. I heard it was, show. Yeah. yeah, it was cool. That was that was that was uh, in 2018. That was like right after when that when the record came out. Yeah, that was that was a good show. We only we only played after the record came out. We only played two weekends worth of shows, but but we did the Northeast. We did Philly, uh, Boston, and and New York. So that was that was the New York show. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And actually, I've I've seen uh, I've seen uh, your other band, uh, Connor, play Genocide Pack at Brooklyn Bazaar. It was oh, a, cool. It was primitive Man with Primitive. Yeah, that's right. That was a great show. Yeah, that was really good. That's packed. Packed show. It was a great turnout. game. Really that's good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's that was a great venue. I guess it's it's gone, gone now, but yeah. that that's place awesome. was fucking awesome. That that's was fun. great. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool. But that's great. So you are, you know, from Boston to Philly down to DC, you guys always have a place to stay. Yeah, yeah. of course. You know, <laughs> absolutely. No, we, yeah, we I mean, make it work. Yeah. Mo- I mean, most, most of the touring has been down that, like, you know, like from Boston down to DC anyways, a little bit further, but that's, that's, that's mostly what we've been doing. That's, that's what's like, has been like the easiest for us, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we will play Australia. We're not afraid to play Australia because we, we definitely did that in 2013 on, on the seven inch. But I don't think the 12 inch had even come out yet. But we we had an offer to, to do it, and we were like, "Fuck it, all right, I guess." And uh, and we did it with Mammoth Grinder, and that was, that was actually awesome. Wow, that sounds yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. I have a really good turnout for that because yeah, the bands don't get over there that often. So anybody yeah. who's into that is just into it. Yeah, I was actually like pleasantly surprised. Like I said, I didn't know if, if anybody even knew who we were or, or whatever, but uh, yeah, the shows were awesome. Cool. I just missed it. I wasn't in the band yet. Yeah, he wasn't in the I band. I heard it was great. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do it. We, we, I, I want to do Australia and Japan. I think that'd be yeah. like when the new record comes out, that'd be sick. Yeah. But that's got to be a ton of money, though. I mean. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, like. It has to be, but. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you have to um you have to buy the ticket, you know, have faith in that. But then you know, you if if you do if the shows are good, you usually make it back. You know what I mean? Like I've I've played I played Australia twice, one with the normal forms and another with uh with a hardcore band. And we, we both did well enough where it it, it didn't it, we didn't take a bath over it, you know? 
like it was totally worth it. I, I would definitely do it again. But you don't fly, you don't fly your equipment over there. Like... No, no way. Well, they, they don't want like, they, like they, the people who book it are like, like, don't tell them you're in a band. Don't tell them this, like, blah, 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 like hide the merch, do what, do whatever you can. You know what I mean? So, so I didn't bring anything last time. Like, like we brought some shirts and, and, and some records, but we, um, but we, uh, uh, we, 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 we got through, it was actually, it was funny, actually, Mammoth, Mammoth Grinder, when, when, when they went through customs, I guess the customs guy found like, um, a box of seven inches. Right. And, uh, and, and he asked the, the guy, the drummer, who's this, this really funny guy named Brian. He was like, he was like, you know, like, what, what is this? Like, are you in a band? Like, 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 you know, who are these records for? Like, what, what you know, ask him, give him a third degree about these records. Right. And, and then Brian's like, he's like, he's like, I don't know. He's like, nobody buys records. Right. And the guy was like, <laughs> no, all right. And then he just let him go. So I was like, all right, great. <laughs> who, who would have thought that would have worked? Uh, that's funny. Because I guess I Australia know. probably has really strict, I'm guessing, like yeah. permits and laws and all that stuff. To, totally. Yeah. yeah. So if it like if we want to do it like legit, it, it would have been a total nightmare. You know what nightmare. I mean? Like we had to pay X amount of money. We would have, have gotten these working papers, all, all that. You know, England's the same way. Okay. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So we, we're not saying that that's what your next European tour is going to be like, but, but, uh, it probably will be. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Well, yeah. well the, 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 the guy they're weird about Town, everything. The, yeah, they, they are. The, the guy who does Kill Town seems pretty legit. So I feel like it's yeah. probably going to be like, like, we're not going to have to like, you know, be deceitful or anything like that. We'll That's the thing is like with the, with a guy like the, the guy who books Kill Town, it's like he, he has to have his shit together so that all the bands, you know, can get over there in a, like, cause also it's a little different cause you know, we're used to doing things kind of sneakily because we're, you know, coming from maybe like punk or hardcore or DIY backgrounds where that's what you do. But yeah. like, how are you going to convince like Incantation to like sneak records in? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you can't do, you know what I mean? Like you yeah. would look like a clown. So yeah, uh, I feel like with fests like that, you know, they have like, you know, they got, they have it figured out and they help the bands like same deal with, uh, you know, going to Australia or Japan or anywhere else. Like I'm sure there's like people, there's people that always help you, you know, figure it out. So. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Any other funny tour stories, uh, weird stuff that's happened that don't involve puke or, you know, anything else? <laughs> don't involve puke. I don't have any stories. That don't <laughs> involve puke. Oh man. <laughs> uh, good question. Justin, you have any? Uh, not, not, not really because it, like, to be honest, like, by the time Innumerable Forms had started touring, half the guys were like well into their thirties. So it's like, there's no bullshit really. Like there's no like insane drama, at least I, no, not really. So, so like it, it, it gets like pretty boring after that. You know what I mean? Like it's all just like, like old men, like playing shows, going out to eat and then, and then, uh, <laughs> and then going to bed. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm like the young gun in the band, but I'm like the most boring guy ever. So it's like I'm just like, let's watch a movie, let's watch <laughs> the Simpsons. Like you, know, you 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 were the young gun, but now you're like what? Like you're like ah, uh, dude. Like I'm ba I'm I'm one foot in the grave at this point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm about to be 27. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm man. old. Yeah. So yeah, you, you catch. Yeah, a lot sorry, of I wish I, mean, I wish we had something exciting to say, but like one, we haven't done enough touring to like really warrant like something really insane happening and then two like we're just boring so yeah <laughs> combination of the two what other kind of boring stuff are you into uh you know outside of music um, um justin and i talk about sports a lot you know yeah we like sports, sports fans. A lot. um yeah. i wouldn't say i'm like a movie expert or anything but i like watching movies like um but i, I mean to be perfectly honest i mean music takes up like 80 percent of my you know my brain and my daily life so music is kind of the number one but yeah i mean other than that like probably just like for me at least like the nfl and the nba takes up a lot of you know to my time yeah. as well just being a fan and stuff but that's really like you know super secondary to music so i don't know is is it weird to have other guys in the band that also play drums uh well to be honest it's it's funny because everybody in the band is such a fucking amazing drummer and 
<laughs> I mean, I'm not even I'm not even bullshitting you. Like everybody in the band, and and since I'm significantly younger than the rest of the guys, like I grew up listening to these guys' bands and stealing stuff <laughs> from their drumming. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, when I joined the band, and I was I was kind of like, fuck, they want me to be the drummer, like everybody in this band is a sick fucking drummer like no, but uh, I, i'm I really think I'm, i think you're the you're the best out of the crew now you know what i mean like, this guy but you know i will say i will say this like i i spent a lot of years uh when i was like in high school learning how to play double kick and playing along to slayer songs and mm-hmm. morbid angel songs and whatever trying to do that and you know I think that when I joined the band, it was kind of like, well, that's, that's like the thing that I can do. You know, I mean, other guys in the band can play double kick, but that was like my special talent, I guess, so I to speak. I can't play double kick. I've never been good at double kick for some reason. I don't know why. I've tried. No, well, you know, I, I, I didn't put the same work in as you did, but like, that's I mean, like I, a, I spent that, that, that that's like a, a use it or lose it thing. Like I was, I was good in like yeah. 2000 or something like that, but now I like, I can barely do it, you know? No, he's he's Justin's a fucking beast on the double kick, but and and like, no, I'm not. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean honestly, it, it's really it's really awesome and, uh, just like you know, I learn a lot from from all these guys musically, and you know, I remember like the first the first practice that I had with the band, um, you know, I had been practicing with, I think it was I was just jamming with you, Justin. I don't even know if Ultra yeah. was there, but. Jensen came in and and Jensen I don't know if you guys have ever seen him play with Iron Lung but he's unbelievable I mean he's an unbelievable drummer he's like when he does a blast beat the room shakes I mean he's like he's one of the hardest hitters I've I've ever I've ever ever seen I mean it's like incredible and I remember we were playing a song with a blast beat and Jensen just kind of looks at me and he's like you're not hitting the snare hard enough And, (laughs) and that was the first, by the way, that was the first day I had ever met Jensen too. And I'm like 21 or something. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, cause you know, you, I, I had been practicing and I thought I was like, I, you know, I don't want to say I thought I was the shit, but I was like, Oh man, I'm like, you know, I'm getting these songs down. I think I got it, you know? And then he's just like, you're hitting the snare pretty weak. You know, I'm just like my world shattered in front of me and you know, but it but made me a better awesome. player. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that's yeah. that's why I bring that story up, because sure. you learn from from learning from the other guys in the band is like a really a really rewarding and and cool experience. Because you're like, yeah. oh, it makes you a better player. Because now when I'm playing blast beats, I'm like, Jensen's not gonna tell me I'm not hitting hard enough this time. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, the snare is so, like the loudest thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So it's good. But Jensen's Jensen's a little bit of a hazer too. He could have just been busting your balls. You know I mean? <laughs> and you know what? Maybe if, he if, was. If you know him, then you know. You know. Maybe he was, but yeah. Regardless, it's not, it's a story that sticks out in my mind because yeah. it, I think about it every time I do a blast beat. Yeah, so, that's sick. Yeah. And, and Justin, I see on your hoodie jujitsu. Are you into jujitsu? Yeah, I, I am. I've been, I've been doing it for, for a long time, actually, for like 12 or, or 13 years. But uh, so so that that's one of my hobbies, I guess. You know what okay. I mean? Like, like yeah. other than music, music is the biggest thing. But but yeah. that's that's definitely one of my hobbies. Um, I'm injured right now. But uh, yeah, that sucks. It really sucks, actually. But uh, but I'm, I'm, yeah, no, it's a bummer. But you know, it could be worse, obviously. And, uh, and I'm getting better. So so we'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah, I remember because we had to postpone, uh, not postpone, but we did yes. push back the interview a, a couple, uh, a little bit because I, what did you say, herniated, herniated disc or something? Uh, a, a herniated disc, but like it was, it was so bad that I, I like, I don't think, I don't think we could have done the interview because like I, I literally, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't even like sit up. You know what I mean? Like I had to be, I was like lying down, like in bed all day every day so like it was just it was horrible i couldn't i just couldn't do anything you know what i mean like it it, it wasn't until maybe a couple weeks ago when i started to feel like like somewhat better you know what i mean but like i lost i lost a lot of um um feeling and strength in my right in my right hand and arm which sucks because i can't even grip a drumstick right now and Mm -hmm. hopefully that comes back you know what i mean like i gotta i'm in physical therapy right now so uh so so I'm fucked if if that if that doesn't happen, but we'll see, you know. 
Mm-hmm. And you don't you are you are not playing any guitar on the new the new record that you're recording. No, nothing. Okay. Nope. Did you write any? Not not that it matters who wrote what, but but yeah yeah, yeah. no 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 I, I I wrote some of the, some of the riffs for for this new record. I would say that um, as far as as the the songwriting process, at least the riffs goes, it's probably like maybe a third me, a third Jensen, and a third chris as far as, as as writing the actual wrist itself and then and then for the the um and, and it's kind of everybody for for the arrangement you know but yeah but the, the, like before i i had done well the, the previous one i probably done maybe 60 percent 60 40 me and jensen but but this time chris is doing way way more of the, of the songwriting which is which is awesome yeah and i guess- and not and not just particular songs i'm talking about like 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 particular riffs and songs. So we'll have songs where everybody contributed to it. You know what I mean? The whole process has been really collaborative. And like when I joined the band, when uh, Jensen and Justin had already been working on uh, Punishment. And like, I would say that co- that record was collaborative too, in a sense, but it was like, yeah. I think you guys had way more of like, hey, like we already kind of have the songs, like just kind of learn them. Right. Whereas this time it was like, you know, truly everybody was working together and like was involved in the right. I mean, like, it's not like I wrote any riffs, but I was there to watch Justin and Chris arrange, song, you know, things like that. And, like, and we, we all help put it to, you know, you help put it together and like, Oh, yeah. we do this X amount of times or we do this here and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. that's cool. That's something that, that we never had before. So I'm really psyched about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how much of it gets gets written sort of remotely and then you know does it does it do you when you meet what i would you say you met in Phil, philly this yeah time? we right. met in philly yeah yeah uh it, you know i i think it, it it depends sometimes you know i'll come in with a whole song ready to go sometimes i'll come up i'll have a riff and i'm like we all right we got to work this out and make it into a song you know what i mean like so we 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 kind of do it both ways like that um for 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 these songs i would say maybe like two or three of them we kind of knew what we wanted to do but the rest we kind of just made it up we just arranged it you know on the spot which is which is awesome like right before you recorded or or like what? no no like like we well, we would like during like the practice sessions you know what i mean okay it it, it, it was cool and, and i remember like or the reason why this is so cool is because you know they're like one one of the last sessions we did i had a couple of riffs but i was like ah, ah i think this is whack I, I don't think i like it like this sucks but i'll just play for you guys anyways and i wasn't into it but 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 like chris like you know chris and, and, and connor would would like put songs together like stuff that i didn't even like and then they would put it together and present this thing and, and as a full cohesive song i'm like wow this is actually like like pretty good so like it, it kind of changed like the now i just I don't throw anything out. I just, I just send it to everybody else and see like, what do you think? Because if they can make this particular thing sound good, then like all bets are off. You know what I mean? Like to the point where like, I might have to go back and check for old riffs, like mine for old riffs that I had like seven years ago and see if we can do something with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the other thing too, is like with, with the way technology is like, it sounds harder than it actually is being in a band where everybody lives in different places because yeah, that's true. Justin, Chris, and I talk every day. I mean, send riffs to each other every day. Like, Jensen. so it's kind of, you know what I'm saying? It's like a very, like, you know, it, it almost feels similarly to being in a band where everybody lives in the same city, but you practice once or twice a month. With us, we practice a little less than that, but it's still like, we're still talking ideas and Justin will send riffs, Chris will send riffs. And these guys are really good with like, they'll program the drums or Chris will just go into his practice space and record every instrument and be like, Hey, what do you guys think? And, you know, so it's a lot easier than it sounds. I would say that. Yeah. That's the other thing. Every, like, like everyone could do everything pretty much. So Jensen sends me something that can be guitar plus drum. You know what I mean? Like Chris Connor. So like, but, and then what to, to Connor's point, like, I feel like this method couldn't have existed like 15 years ago. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, obviously, you know, yeah. Cool. Uh, what else you got, Eric? <laughs> I think that's all the questions I had. I mean, does anyone want to plug or promote anything else coming up? Are there other bands, side projects, anything else? Let's see. I 
I am doing, well, before the pandemic, um, we recorded, I, I played in this band called uh, Summerlands. And we just, we, we, um, we have a new record coming out. We have a, a new singer. Actually, the, the, the singer of Summerlands is now Brendan from Magic Circle. He's, okay. he's the new singer. So we're, we, yeah. we record an LP. That's almost done. So we're going to, that's going to come out on, on relapse, pro probably early, early in the new year. Okay. So I got, I got that. And then we have the, the forms record, of course. But, but uh, Connor probably has some other stuff coming down the line. Yeah, I actually, uh, the reason that we had to reschedule this interview a couple times is because I was actually just in the studio with uh, Genocide Pact. And okay. we, I just finished yesterday. Um, we're doing a new LP. It's also going to be on relapse. Uh, okay. We've got pretty much everything done for that, except for vocals. So uh, I would expect that to be out uh, again, probably like summer next year, probably honestly around the same time the innumerable forms record will come out. Okay. So uh, yeah, look out for that. And then I, I play in another band. I actually sing in a band uh, called brain tourniquet. That's like, influenced by like the uh like the west coast power violence bands from the early 90s late 80s like crossed out man is the bastard infest neanderthal yeah and um we're actually doing a seven inch on iron lung records jensen's label that uh it's all good to go um it's all recorded and stuff i'm just like working on artwork and that should be out i would hope like probably april april may so a lot of uh, pretty much everything i'm working on right now is going to come out around the same time. So, yeah. Do you do artwork? No, I'm, I actually oh, fucking working, hate it. I'm putting it yeah. together. Okay. Like, I, I got the sense you were like, mm. Oh, no, no, no. I'm like the worst artist in the world. <laughs> I can barely write my own name, to be honest with you. But, yeah, I, I, I just like that I, I, that style like of, uh, of music. Usually it's just like, you know, pi pictures of terrible stuff. You yeah. know, and I, so I'm just trying to find some pictures of terrible stuff and uh, putting them together for, you know, a layout. So, um, but no, I don't do art. I'm again, like Justin said earlier, like I'm not a very visual person. I'm very just like, you know, music and whatever. So mm -hmm. sure, not an artist by any means, <laughs> but yeah. Cool. Uh, well, I really, uh, anything else before we we'll, we'll wrap it up soon or? No, th thanks for the interview. This, yeah, this was thank fun. For sure, man. Thank you guys for for being interested in what we do. No, yeah. Thank, no, yeah, and I'm I'm looking forward to the new stuff. Um, I, yeah, really appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, always a good time. Yeah, cool. thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll we'll put some links. I always put links in the in the description, so please, thank you. you know, check it out. Um, and uh, and that's it. You know, let let us know when the the stuff comes out, and you know, we'll we'll plug it wherever we can. Awesome. Cool. Thank we you. will, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Cool. Thanks, everybody. All, All right. right. Take care. Later.